Shalom, shalom, shalom. Today we're going to talk about covetedness. And this research comes from Damien Powell's blog. You can see more information about uh, the teaching and all his teachings at YeshuaSaysAll.com. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 17, it says, You do not covet your neighbor's house. You do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, or whatever belongs to your neighbor. When we look in the book of the 12 patriarchs, uh, the Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs, uh, and we look at um, Simeon's testimony that he wrote to the future generations as um, a testament of what not to do, the things that he uh, did in his life and made mistakes on. He was telling the future generations how to avoid these same mistakes. And he says, and now my children, hearken unto me and beware of the spirit of deceit and envy. For envy ruleth over the whole mind of a man and suffered him neither to eat nor to drink nor to do any good thing. But it ever suggested to him to destroy him that he envy it. And so long as he that is envied flourishes, he that envieth faded away. Two years, therefore, I afflicted my soul with fasting in the fear of Yahweh. And I learned that deliverance from envy cometh by the fear of Elohim. For if a man flee to Yahweh, the evil spirit runneth away from him, and his mind is lightened. And henceforward, he sympathizes with him who he envied and forgiveth those who are hostile to him. And so ceased it from his envy. In Sirach chapter 10, verse 9, included in the original King James Version, 1611, it says, How could earth and ashes be proud? There is none more wicked than a covetous man. For such a one puts his own being up for sale. For while he lives, he destroys his inner being. A person would literally deteriorate internally by stressing and spending his days wanting, wanting what others have and will do anything to get it, even sell his own being. In Proverbs 21, 25 to 26, it says, The desire of the lazy man slays him, for his hands refuse to work. He covets greedily all day long, but the righteous one gives and does not withhold. The definition of covet is yearn to possess or having something, to be consumed with desire for, have one heart set on. So you want something that others have. You want something that doesn't belong to you. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 22 to 23, it says, The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, all your body shall be enlightened. But if your eye is evil, all your body shall be darkened. If then the light that is within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? In Sirach chapter 14, verses 9 and 10, it says, The greedy man has an evil eye. He turns away his face and despises men. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. And the wickedness of the wicked dries up his being. So let's take a look at how we test the spirit to see 
if someone is truly walking with Elohim, they're truly following Elohim, uh, scripture says we would know them by their fruit. So how do we test the spirit? In 1 John 4, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from Elohim. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the spirit of Elohim. Every spirit that confesses that Yeshua HaMashiach has come in the flesh is from Elohim. And every spirit that does not confess Yeshua is not from Elohim. This is the spirit of the anti-Messiah, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from Elohim and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world. Therefore, they speak from the world and the world listens to them. We are from Elohim. Whoever knows Elohim listens to us. Whoever is not from Elohim does not listen to us. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 19, it says, For out of the heart comes forth wicked reasonings, murders, adulteries, whorings, thefts, false witnessing, and slanderers. In James 4, 14 to 17, it says, But if you have bitter jealousy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast against and lie against the truth. This is not the wisdom coming down from above, but it is earthy, unspiritual, and demonic. For where jealousy and self-seeking are, there is confusion in every foul deed. But the wisdom from above is first clean, then peaceable, gentle, ready to obey, filled with compassion and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. The fruit of the Spirit is peace and life, but the works of the flesh, by one coveting, could birth all kinds of evil which stems from your heart, that could make one murder or steal for what they have been coveting. We are called to be selfless and not selfish, which means that we are to be satisfied with what we have been given. Coveting is not being satisfied with the provision that Yahweh has given. And that person is jealous of what others have. So if you are coveting everything that others have, then your eye has become evil and your body will become darkened with jealousy, hatred, and envy, which are the works of the flesh and not of someone who is being led by the Ruach HaKodesh. The Ruach HaKodesh, as Paul writes in Galatians 5, 19 and 20, says, And the works of the flesh are well known, which are adultery, whoring, uncleanness, indecency, idolatry, drug sorcery, hatred, quarrels, jealousies, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, faction, envy, murders. We see how uh, Potiphar's wife wanted Joseph for herself. When we look in uh, Genesis and in, in the story of Joseph, um, when she saw him, she desired to do whatever it took to purchase him. She convinced her husband to purchase him because he bought a better car to the house of whomever he resided. The Miphian woman pretended she wanted Joseph as her son at first to get closer to him. Her real desire was to get him to fornicate. She was led by covetedness. The Miphian woman, Potiphar's wife committed lewd acts by showing parts of her body to ensnare him. She even offered to poison her own husband or kill herself if Joseph didn't conform to her ways. Joseph remained faithful to Yahweh by fasting and praying. The Miphian woman thrusted herself on Joseph and Joseph ran from her and his clothing was 
and his clothing was left in her hands. The woman lied on Joseph, saying that he attacked her, and Joseph was placed into prison. Joseph finally had peace from her. Yahweh's provision doesn't always look like we want it to look, but it's the best plan for our lives. In Sirach, chapter 25, verses 13 and 20, it says, Any wound but a wound of the heart, any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman, and any affliction but the affliction of those who hate me, and any revenge but the revenge of enemies. There is no venom above the venom of a serpent, and there is no wrath above the wrath of an enemy. I would rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to dwell in a house with a wicked woman. The wickedness of a woman changes her appearance and darkens her face like sackcloth. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors, and listening, he shall sigh bitterly. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a transgressor fall on her, as the climbing of a, of a sandy way is to the feet of the aged. Be satisfied with what Yahweh has barak you with, has blessed you with. In 1 Timothy 6, 7 to 8, it says, For we brought not into the world, and it is impossible to take any out. When we have food and covering, we shall be satisfied with these. Sirach chapter 29, verse 21 says, The necessities for life are water and bread and garments and a house for privacy. So what are your thoughts? Thank you for listening.